<laughs> All right, how's everybody doing? It's been a long day, huh? I'm glad you guys are all still here for this. So, uh, I'm Rob Sanders, I'm with RDA, and I'm actually proud to announce we just did a major rebrand yesterday. So, this is the new guard, this new vision here for RDA, keeping up with a uh, digital transformation of our own. But uh, today, I'm actually very honored to be here with uh, Jason Hulsma of NRF, CIO, and Marco DeCampos from Storyblock. So we have, uh, we've been working with NRF since uh, late last year, and just bringing what we call the vision to victory is something we're very proud of at RDA. And being able to work with an esteemed organization, this is NRF, is just a privilege for us to work with. So I'm happy to kind of share this vision that uh, Jason's gonna share with us, but also, does everybody know who NRF is? Who's he who here has been to call it the big show? Just one? Cool. Is that Brittany too? I can't see up here. <laughs> so NRF is actually a, a, an awesome organization that is made up of retailers and non-retailers that not only support like the big show and have this major event that over 40,000 people attend, they also have other events and advocacy for retailers. Um, actually, you're probably hearing a lot about them in the news this week because of the port shut down on the East Coast especially and how that's affecting our consumerism and retail that could have a major impact on the holidays coming up and able to move merchandise. So they are on Capitol Hill right now and uh, every day, I'm sure Jason is on multiple calls every day uh, by the hour, uh, helping to understand Capitol Hill to get those ports back open. So they advocate on the retailer's behalf, but they do just more than that. As you see, the advocacy side, their membership side is retailers, non-retailers, um, and then they do executive level management so engagement with all executives all throughout these retailers, multiple councils in the community. Um, they also do member briefings to understand what's going on in the retail industry. And this is also interesting to us because retail, they are pioneers in technology. So if the retailers have this need to always evolve, how are we learning that and helping and eating their own dog food essentially to NRF? What are they doing for the vision? How are they keeping up with technology and then showing their retailers they're also staying up and advocating and helping them through all these technology advancements? Uh, NRF events, over 40,000 go to the big show in New York at the Javis Center in January. But they also have very intimate events. So if you're in a technology company and you're looking for a more, uh, more intimate event and roundtable discussions, you know, their Nexus events, check out what they have because they, they are very, very out there and want to help. Um, all retail, and of course all the research they do in helping uh, these retailers and also understanding what is going on in our world and consumerism. So at this time I'm going to hand over the reins to Jason. He's going to share NRF's actual vision for the future and what we're currently doing and what that vision looks like. Thanks Rob, I appreciate it. I'm going to uh, sit so I don't trip over anything. I'm not very coordinated sometimes. Um, so as Rob said, the National Retail Federation is a, it's an organization that represents kind of one of the most innovative industries out there. We have um, solution providers that help drive innovation within the retail industry, and then we have our retailers who are uh, hyper-focused on driving better user experiences, understanding their customers, being able to create um, unique and targeted experiences within their own ecosystems. And so one of the things that we kind of embarked upon over the last uh, two years is modernizing our infrastructure. One of the things that we had a problem with was making sure that um, who were we serving, what, were we, what, would, what did they want, and, and how did, what was the value proposition for them. And we couldn't really tell that story very well because we had uh, antiquated infrastructure. We had Drupal as our, our content management system. We have uh, an, a legacy AMS system that didn't allow us a lot of um, flexibility around the tools and products we could create within that ecosystem. And then our marketing platform was antiquated. In addition to those kind of systems being some barriers for us to, to move forward, we also had issues with our content creation cycle. So when, when our marketing team wanted to deploy content or something innovative or interesting on a site or a feature, they uh, had to involve IT. And so we were, the devs had to get involved throughout this process and the content cycle would drag on. And so when we'd launch a site, it would take us six weeks to develop it and then another two weeks to do bug fixes and enhancements as we went through kind of that uh, launch cycle. So, in addition to that, we didn't have any way to collect information about who was, who was, uh, who was visiting our site. What, were they, what did they come for? How long did they stay? What were they consuming? 
And so with those, you know, the challenges there, you know, we look to RDA to be able to help us think through some of this stuff. So we wanted to reduce our complexity. We wanted to personalize our user experiences, be able to drive better, more targeted messaging so that when people come to the site, they actually got what they were looking for. And we wanted to also capture that. So we wanted to be able to see when they came, how long were they there, what we could align that with what retail segment they were from, and then be able to, to drive better user experiences. And our goal was to streamline that process, be able to gather information, and be able to, to use that information to drive better uh, insights around who was, who was attending or attending our events or consuming our content. Um, additionally, the, the content creation process was really bad. It took a long time to deploy fresh new ideas. And so we wanted to remove IT from that equation and allow the content owners to own that process from beginning to end. And so we worked with RDA to help us kind of deploy, uh, kind of identify and map out that vision. And Rob will talk a little bit more about kind of what the engagement looked like. So we evaluated, you know, multiple pieces of software and listening. The key thing is we, we want to listen to our customers, what they're wanting and needing and striving to do. And it's just not acceptable to have you know, a marketing team to have to send content updates for a developer to have to develop. So um, the, you know, the, past, the past journey here, uh, Jason and team already put a CRM in place. And the second part of this journey for the present is replacing those, those digital properties and utilizing Storyblock with Netlify. And what that has brought to the NRF organization is now their entire marketing team is enabled to update content. They don't need to go to a developer, and it's refreshing to them. And we get on training calls and, and go through you know, component redesign and, and, and showing them and training them, and they're like, wow, I can actually do this. This is, this is awesome. I've never been able to do this. And now I'm empowered to actually update my own content and line things, center things, whatever else, put borders and different colors, and they're, they're blown away by the ease of use. So if you're modernizing your technology, I'm not doing my job in training and allowing and enabling an easy mechanism for our customers to update their content. And that was one of the number one goals we, uh, we solved with going with Storyblock, Headless CMS, and the deployment with Netlify. And Netlify makes it very easy, too. So our deployments are very fast. Um, it's all accessible. And we have um, developers that just picked up uh, instantly. We're not dealing with the whole deployment process that's very cumbersome and hard. And the reliance on security and knowing the big show's coming up in January, just that peace of mind that we're not going to have an issue. Um, also present, uh, Marketing Cloud is also a huge marketing initiative for outbound marketing to to all the members and uh, just all the collateral. But in the future, we want to combine. NRF has multiple entities. Uh, right now, we are, Big Show is live. So bigshow.nrf.com is actually live. But then there's six other sites actually under development right now. And how do we create a seamless experience with SSO as well within that to make it seamless and not have to have multiple logins across the board to all those different uh, platforms? Agolia Search, another issue. Um, you know, searches is, is a big deal. And how do we actually leverage AI insights, too? And how do we actually boost and bury certain content and old content versus new, especially once we get towards uh, specific events uh, for that information that people are looking for? And the final one, uh, I know that Jason's very proud of, it's coming up, is uh, personalization. And how do we make that user experience just even more engaging for that customer when they hit that site, knowing who they are, what they're looking for, and getting them on and off, but with a consistent experience uh, that's engaging to what they need to know and learn. Uh, moving into the technology, I'm going to let Marco uh, talk a little bit about Storyblock. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Hey, it's, it's very nice when the people <laughs> answer the question. So, hey, talk back to thank it. you for that. It's, I'm very, very happy, very excited to be here. And, very excited to, to share this, this journey. It's been, it's been that, it's been an adventure, this, all this uh, technology uh, growing and all this evolution, right? With the Starblock, for the ones that doesn't know, Starblock is, yes, the headless CMS that, that uh, NRF are using with us, right? And for, for a while, and, well, 
you are hearing now or listening now, a, a very common word is they need something that is easy to use, right? You can very uh, quickly see a, a glimpse on how easy it is to create a content, how easy it is to manage editing and publishing content, right? But at the end, it's not just creating content, right? We need a tool that helps them power the developers and the content creators in that process. And that is where Storyblock uh, step up and, and, very sh and shines a, a lot, right? Because now you can answer, okay, Storyblock is a very, very nice feature, very easy to use, but how is Storyblock helps NRM to to very to really empower the, their team, right? And to this, to answer that, to to this, how we have three keys, right? First, empower the developers, right? Now the developers with the start block have powerful tools like powerful APIs, webhooks, tasks, the possibility to create and use plugins in different apps. And what I say, not only use, also develop. Now they can create multiple integrations and tools that will, will basically make your life easier and make their life much easier. So they can grow with the Storyblock. Now they, they can basically evolve with the Storyblock. So now that the developers create this nice environment, now it's time to empower the content creators. So yes, now the content creators have the power to create the content, what we like to say, uh, zero to hero. Now the content creators can create content from scratch to de deployment. All of them without any interaction of the developers. Now they have the real power to create a content in the way that they want. So now we give all this power to the developers. Also we give all this power and uh, freedom to the content creators. But as a company, as a team, they need to have control of what is happening and also the transparency of who is doing what and also where. So now, uh, what we like to call is a regulated flexibility. Now NROs have the power to decide who can do what and where. And that is thanks to all our features like uh, customizable workflows or uh, granular user roles. All these elements helps the team to work together but without depend on each other. They have now the freedom and the power to move forward. And with all that, now, now it's time to see the result. How, how now in the reps are the results. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say, you know, the big show live, my live, oh, it's not on here. It disappeared. Anyway, you can go to bigshow.nrf.com and see it for yourself. It's live. Um, but the, the results of all this is our marketing team at NRF is ecstatic. This is highly successful and we are, you know, the vision to victory that we're solving here for NRF is just one piece of the puzzle. We have a long road ahead to go into the next phases of work, but working with our partners within Storyblock, Netlify, you know, RDA, NRF, and even more in this room that we could potentially even work with, you know, for these future phases, you know, it's, it's all in partnership. And that success comes through our partnerships with all of you guys. So we have a lot of people to thank for being here and uh, look forward to maybe seeing you guys at the big show or a smaller event like Nexus. Uh, I think on the front row, he's already signed up. Yeah, right <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, just thank you for letting us be here, show you this success, and we'll see you guys soon. See you at the party. <laughs> See you at the party. Right.